Good evening and welcome back to SF Commons continued coverage of the case of the United States of America versus Julian Assange, publisher, journalist. WikiLeaks has released more than 700 top secret US military documents which provide intelligence assessments of nearly all those detained in the infamous Guantanamo prison. The files passed on to the New York Times and Britain's Guardian newspaper uncover years of manic intelligence gathering post 9-11, which resulted in the incarceration of innocent people on questionable evidence. In April 2010, WikiLeaks released its most damaging footage to date. Seen here, a number of Iraqi civilians and two Reuters journalists are gunned down the U.S. Army Apache helicopter crew ignoring the rules of engagement. Come on, fire! As a civilian van arrived to pick up the dead, the U.S. Apache turned its guns onto the van and its occupants, despite there being two children inside. Come on! Clear. Clear. Warning. This shocking footage caused immense embarrassment to the US government and started a witch hunt for those responsible for leaking it. High-tech terrorists. Cyber terrorists. And information terrorism. Shut it down. We're going to hang you. Use a drone or something. A bullet in the brain. Information warfare is warfare. And Julian Assange is engaged in warfare. This is pretty simple. we got special ops forces. I mean, a, a dead man can't leak stuff. It is an honor and a privilege to have with us tonight Mr. James Goodell, the legal counsel of the New York Times in the landmark First Amendment case, New York Times versus the U.S., otherwise known as the Pentagon Papers, which chronicled the U.S. Defense Department's top secret papers on the U.S. political and military involvement in the Vietnam War. Very significant, this uh, goddamn New York Times expose of the most highly classified documents of the war. Oh, that, I see. That, that, I didn't read the story, but uh, you mean that, that was leaked out of the Pentagon? Sir, it, uh, the whole study that was done for McNamara and then carried on after McNamara left by Clifford and the Peaceniks over there. This is a devastating uh, security breach of, of the greatest magnitude of anything I've well, ever seen. Well, what, uh, what's being done about it then? I mean, I didn't... Uh, well, I did we know this was coming out? No, we did not, sir. Mr. Goodell wrote the book, Fighting for the Press, the inside story of the Pentagon Papers and other battles. Thank you, Mr. Goodell, for joining us, and welcome. Evening. I'm very glad to be here. The two leaks, one by Daniel Ellsberg and the one received by Julian Assange, were strangely similar. The called Daniel Ellsberg the most dangerous man in America. One has to remember that in 1971, when this leak took place, Vietnam was the biggest story going in the headlines every day, and an anti-war movement had built up against participation by the United States in the Vietnam War. The United States had continuously lied about that relationship to make North Vietnam the villain when perhaps the real villain was United States. My God, you know, can, can you imagine the New York Times doing a thing like this 10 years ago, even 10 years ago? Mr. President, if, and then when McCarthy accused them of treason, they were screaming bloody murder. This is treason. That's right. No, whatever they may think of the policy, it is treasonable to take this stuff out. And right. Oh, it's one thing to... It serves the enemy. Respect, according to your friend Rostow, you're quoting as a gentleman by the name of Ellsberg, who yeah. is a 
left winger that's now with the Rand Corporation, who also have a set of these documents. Yeah. So. Uh, Subpoena them, Christ, get them. Uh, so I would, I would think that we should advise the Times. We will start our covert check, uh, and after McGovern Hatfield, just open it up. Right. Go ahead. Does that, does that agree with you? Yep. All right, sir. We'll do. We have nothing here, Mr. President. But and I have been trying to put the damn thing together for three years. We have a basic history of it constructed on our own, but the, there is a file on it where Houston swears to God there's a file on it and it's Russians. I wouldn't be surprised. All right, all right, all right. You remember the answer the same kind of the same job, Bob, the same people, Bob. Now, you remember Houston's plan. But couldn't we go over, now Brookings has no right to, to have a private contract. You know, I, I mean, I wanted to implement it on a thievery basis. God damn it, get in and get those files. Go to the state and get it. There was a, a lot of uh, reaction to what the New York Times did, but mostly it was the outside. That is to say, the war protesters who were so excited that this had happened, that it was so clear to me that the government was wrong, that there wasn't any doubt in my mind that we would win. The U.S. government's indictment of Julian Assange, computer intrusion, computer abuse and fraud act, which is the federal government's primary anti-hacking statute, doesn't this implicate the First Amendment? Well. The real case here is that Julian Assange released tons of documents that he'd gotten from private first class Bradley Manning, just the same as Daniel Ellsberger's. That's what we're really talking about. Now, right. the government doesn't want to make this a great First Amendment case. They've tried to play a tricky dicky here by going around the First Amendment, they think, by saying, hey, this is a computer hack. When you look at it closely, it looks to me as though that strategy is largely made up and is in effect a press release for the Justice Department to say, hey, don't come after us for a big Pentagon Papers case. This guy hacked. But when you look at it closely, you really wonder whether there's anything to their case. And therefore, I would not be the least surprised if they came back and re-indicted him for something else. And that's not just me blowing out my ears, because Bradley Manning, who's the leaker, was in jail because he wouldn't talk uh, to the U.S. authorities. The grand jury, which was covering that case, disbanded. And uh, as we speak, you know, Bradley Manning is out of jail, but he goes back to jail. Well, what's the relevance of that? Well, they need Bradley Manning probably to tell him everything that's been going on because they can't quite put it all together in one little count as you started off this question. So I... Uh, I am quite suspicious as to what the government has said so far. I may be wrong, but I don't believe them. The FBI forensic agent who made an analysis of what they allegedly found that are all based on circumstantial evidence that said that Julian Assange helped Chelsea Manning crack a password. This event of which you just spoke has been mischaracterized in the press uh, as follows. Uh, Julian Assange uh, got help from Manning and vice versa, and Julian Assange therefore went right to the computers of the United States government and stole government information. That's what it sounds like. But in what in fact happened was that 
uh, Manning said, I need some cover. How, can you help me with a password? And Hassan says, I'll take a look. He took a look, and that's all that happened. Now, if somebody talks to another person and says, I need, need some help to cover my tracks, and that person to whom the question has been directed does nothing, which is what happened in this case, is that a conspiracy in which someone's going to go to jail? It doesn't sound like much to your audience, I'm sure. Right. It doesn't <laughs> sound much like much to me, and my guess is it doesn't sound like much to the government, and the government knows it has a weak case against Assange because he didn't do very much. And so the thinking goes, perhaps what they want to do is strengthen their case by getting Manning to provide more details. That's a guess, but it's, it's a logical one. And in any event, it seems to me, and I believe it's true of what others think, is that the case against Assange, based on what you have just described, doesn't seem very strong. And with Chelsea Manning, she already testified before the military tribunal, and they tortured her. She was naked in solitary confinement, and all of the transcripts have already provided her answers. Chelsea Manning uh, testifies and gives a lot of answers as to what she did. But this particular issue on which Assange is being indicted never came up in the trial, to the best of my knowledge. So why is the government coming around a second time and trying to make a different trial of it and put away uh, Assange as a, as a consequence? You know, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. And you've got to remember that the uh, Obama administration looked at these very same facts when the information about which you and I have talked was brought to the attention of the Obama administration. And it decided it wasn't going to indict, they said, or it said subsequently, because there are too many First Amendment problems involved. We've talked about them. But I wouldn't be surprised if they also thought it's such a weak case. They didn't want to get into it. But anyway, the bottom line is they looked at all of which we've been talking and decided not to go ahead. Now we have Trump in office, they're looking at it again, and they go ahead, but they don't seem to have very much. So the whole business is somewhat mystifying. Right. Now, another question is, New York Times was charged with conspiracy to commit espionage act. Similarly, the allegations on the indictment also make the same charges against Julian Assange. Can you describe the two cases and find the similarities? After the New York Times published was that a grand jury was convened in Boston, Massachusetts, in order to see if there was a conspiracy between the New York Times reporter who first received the information, and others, including Ellsberg, who had access to the Pentagon Papers. Conspiracy is like the last gasp of a prosecutor. If you can't prosecute somebody for a murder that everyone has seen, you try to get that person for a conspiracy, because all you have to show is the person you're after agreed with the leaker that it was it was to be leaked, and the conspirator like Sheehan thus becomes responsible for crime. So in this case, we all know Manning was a criminal because he went to jail. So what the government wants to do is say, hey, let's look at Assange. Assange agreed with Manning to receive the leak, Manning is guilty of a crime, and we want Assange to 
be in the shoes of Manning because Assange agreed with Manning to receive the leak. So that Manning Assange would stand in the shoes of Manning and be responsible for what Manning did. In other words, Manning leaked, Manning's guilty, Assange received the leak because Manning was guilty, Assange is guilty. Uh, and that's because they agreed to go through this leak. So that's a convoluted legal explanation I went through. But let's look at it this way. It's just a simple, easy way of catching somebody who didn't do the crime in the first place, but agreed with that person to be part of what that person did. Great. Now, the computer intrusion that was described by the FBI forensic agent showed a, uh, a narrative, a transcript of the supposed exchange between Chelsea Manning and supposedly this person who the government is trying to say Julian Assange. It was anonymous chat room. So the government does not have a conclusive evidence that the person that Chelsea Manning was communicating with was, in fact, Julian Assange. Uh, the vagueness of what it is that Manning and Assange are being charged with, with respect to so-called cracking the password, by the way, they never did and never tried to do, is less than clear, and to reach the conclusion the government did is through what lawyers call circumstantial evidence. And it's really not very clear. It's, it's a weak case. Okay, so how do you make a weak case strong when you're relying on circumstantial evidence or clues? Let's call it clues. Well, the answer is you go to one of the two, and will one of the two rat on the other? So what they're trying to do is they're trying to get uh, Chelsea Manning to rat on Assange and say to the grand jury and say to the jury, hey, this is what we were going to do. Then all of a sudden, the government's got, you know, the words of one of the parties thereafter. Testimony is what lawyers call it. Call it. And that's much better than a lot of hieroglyphics that happen in a computer because, after all, this is going to go to a jury. If all of a sudden Manning comes on to the stand and says, I did it, folks, you know, oh, okay, we'll convict. But will they convict when they go through the conversation that you and I went through? I mean, it's, it's hard for me to understand you. It's hard for you to understand me. How can anyone who's sitting in that jury box understand it? All of the above is that when you are trying to put someone away, as they're trying to put Assange away, you have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he is guilty of what is charged. Now, we've had a discussion in which the events that took place are very vague, and you have to sort of reason from one to another and when you hear that as a normal, ordinary person sitting in the jury box, you say, well, I guess that could be so, but have they proved that where I don't have any doubt at all? I mean, anyone who's heard our story today will say, gee, doesn't sound like, uh, you know, a game changer to me. It sounds, well, maybe it happened, but it sounds a little doubtful. And if that's what goes through these juries' mind, they cannot convict Assange. And so I would say, based on the case that we've talked about here today, I would say there's no chance a jury would convict because it's so confusing. On the other hand, if they get Manning to say, hey, I did it, well, then the jury could convict because that's a reasonable conclusion that responds to what Manning said. The district court where this case is going to be tried, where the indictment occurred, is this, the district court of Virginia. 
The Virginia court is situated in a place where the jury pool seems to be represented by the intelligence community. People who work with the CIA, NSA, so on and so forth, they convicted Kuryaku, they convicted Sterling, they convicted Manning. It seems to be a special place where if the U.S. wants to convict somebody, they take it to the Virginia court. Now, two questions. One, on this case, is there a possibility of removing the case, changing the venue at all, because the facts of the jury pool stands out? This court is a court where the government brings all its leak cases because it is located, as you say, where there are a lot of intelligence people. So if you're the government, you want to bring your case in this court because maybe even the confused jury, which I thought might happen in this case, might not be confused because they're so prejudiced against Beaker. So that's where the government wants, wants to be. But under the rules that apply with respect to where you bring cases, the government just can't bring them any old place they want to. They have to have a reasonable connection to the court where they bring the case. And they may not have a reasonable connection because this crime we're talking about, where, where did it take exactly. place? I mean, it may have Assange is in England and Manning's in Iran or Iraq or Afghanistan. Uh, the government may have trouble trying to bring it where they want to. And if the case gets moved, we want it someplace else. Right, so exactly. That's gonna, that, by the way, that's going to happen. And I don't know whether it win or not, but it's going to happen. Uh, the U.S. can pluck out any publisher or journalist anywhere in the world and charge them. Why not in Bali? The thing, the case is a mess, isn't it? Exactly. And, so, and, it's, a, and it's not only a mess, just sort of a common sense term. we got to remember that this guy, Julian Assange, leaked important stuff the American people should know about. Let's not forget that he leaked a video of a, hel of a U.S. Army helicopter shooting reporters and killing them who worked for Reuters. Known, known about that. And you've got to remember also that uh, Manning, Chelsea Manning, isn't just a kook which some people would think, he really believed he was blowing the whistle. He was a whistleblower exactly. trying to tell the American public that when you are in a U.S. Army helicopter and you're shooting reporters from Reuters, hey, there's something wrong here. So that context in which this crazy case takes place makes it more, I would say, difficult for the government to win. In fact, I'm, I'm now convinced myself the government can't win the case. In the discussion of the freedom of the press to publish information and freedom of speech, isn't the underlying reason for that is the public's right to know what the government, what their government is doing in a case where the U.S. spends trillions of dollars on the military and on these wars, but yet we have millions of homeless and poor people out in the streets. I think that you make a very good point. And when people say First Amendment and everybody's shouting, you say, hey, that's for the benefit of, you know, Time Magazine, the old Newsweek Magazine, the New York Times. It's just a bunch of journalists wanting to get their story. But the real reason for all of it is so you and I and everyone else can figure out what's going on. So if we don't like it, we can tell our government 
to stop it. Right. And in the Vietnam War, for example, the uh, whole truth of what was going on was covered up with lies. And gee, it was a pretty bad thing. You know, you, what, 50,000 people, I can't remember the number, something like that, got killed in Vietnam. It would have been a very good thing if we'd known exactly what the truth was before we let the war go on for so long. I mean, that's the whole idea of the First Amendment, to ultimately inform all of us whether we want our government to do something for us. The government is not a separate entity. It's us. Right, exactly. The government exactly. is us, you know, raised to the ninth power because we all can't do the same thing at once. So we ask them to represent us. But if they don't tell us what's going on, why do we even have them there? It is not based on very much, and yet he's been beaten up. So he's important for those of us who want to take a balanced view of this to realize that he was the principal mover of an important leak that gave us information we would not have otherwise had. The of law, and we have the rule of law. So in your, in your legal analysis... I think they've got a sliver of a case uh, presently, and I, we've talked about its weaknesses. Now, we don't know what's going to happen next, because we all know there's another grand jury. Right. What's that grand jury going to do? Now, I happen to think that the lawyers who are running this case for the government are sitting there thinking the same way you and I are, right. that they've got a weak case. How can they make it stronger? So we don't know how this is all going to come out. And perhaps the government could make the case stronger. I don't know how it would do, do that uh, easily in my mind. I can think of some possibilities. But right now, they have a sliver of a case. They still have some time to make it stronger. Sometimes has been charged with everything, okay? He's been We are only talking about something that happened 10 years ago when he leaked material about Afghanistan, Iraq, the diplomatic corps. And that's, remember, to whom he leaked it. The New York Times. Exactly. The Guardian. El Pai, Le Monde, excuse my language, those are all great papers. So in other words, I'm saying this leak is a particular leak, and it's the best one for Assange, in a sense, because he was accompanied in everything he did by the New York Times as just one example. Age in dissent, which one should strongly consider in this case and in other cases. You shouldn't give up and give states evidence. You shouldn't give up and join the other side. You should stick to your beliefs. You go to jail for your convictions. That principle has been true for as long as we can remember in terms of our history and the history of the world. It's important to have a belief in the truth and stick to that belief. All men by nature desire to know. Aristotle, when he wrote this, was saying that the thing that makes human beings different from other creatures, the thing that defines us, is the pursuit and acquisition of knowledge. This is not just to say that we, human beings, are curious creatures. It is to say that our ability to think about and to act on the world around us is bound up with our ability to know it. To be alive as a human being is to know in the same way as it is to have a heart that beats. The very next saying in Proverbs is, the wise are mightier than the strong. Thank you for joining us again. See you next time. Good night.